Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. Welcome to 15 Minutes of Game. Today we're going to have a look at a title called Rack and Ruin, which came out on the 1st of September by LifeSpark Entertainment. It describes itself as an action adventure from a top down perspective in a lovingly handcrafted world. We will see about that, won't we? It's 15 Minutes of Game. Skip through just a little bit of the tutorial here. We'll begin now. It's a decent looker, you've got to admit, isn't it? It does have a rather interesting aesthetic to it. I don't think the claim that it was lovingly handcrafted is actually immediately out of place, really. It's actually quite nice to see something that clearly had some effort put into the aesthetic. Try pressing the lock on trigger more than once to switch targets. Yes, okay. Thank you, tutorial. Kill this evil cat thing. So apparently you are some sort of minion of the Dark Lord sent down to this world to conquer it. But you start off with almost no powers whatsoever. There's a rabbit. Can we kill it? We absolutely can. We seem to get... I don't know what these are. The game hasn't told me yet. It might be experience or something along those lines. Inventory, yes. Okay. That's nice. Can I do anything with this? That's actually a good question. Maybe it's just telling me that the inventory is a thing. So you could sort of levitate these things around the place. Not really sure where this is supposed to be going. You'd think that I could kind of pick this up, but that doesn't appear to be the case. A little weird. The combat reminds me very much of some of those top-down roguelite experiences. I mean, obviously Isaac is a prime example of that, but there's a couple of other ones that do this fairly similar. Outside of that, though, I think the older Zelda comparisons might be a little bit accurate. I mean, that's to have a map, wouldn't it? It would help to have one. What on earth is going on here? All right, okay, suddenly we've gone into bullet hell. Interesting. The game's description did mention that it had some bosses with some complicated bullet patterns. I guess it wasn't kidding. Oh, these things are also invincible while they're in that aura. Okay, good to know. There we go. I finally killed it. So I guess I gained some experience and or currency from that. As far as I can tell. I still have absolutely no bloody idea where I'm going. Which is a little unhelpful. I'm almost dead as well. What's this other item that I have? It's an eye. Okay, ah, so the eye also fights alongside me. Oh, those are chests. Oh, okay. You see, that should have been relatively obvious to me, but I'm a, obviously a bit of an idiot. I like the way the game's been designed to allow you to take shortcuts back to where you were previously, although I still have absolutely no idea where I'm going. So there is a map. It's not that specific, is it? So I guess this is where I am. I can't. don't think I can zoom in at all. If there's a fast travel, it's not enabled as of yet. So that map is not hugely helpful. All right, I've been here before. There we go. The combat is fairly simple to begin with anyway. But I assume you do get a bunch of other spells that you can also upgrade later on. Nothing too bad about it. It's mostly dodge attacks. There we go. So whatever that was, I now have it. Let's head in this general direction and see what's going on. Absolutely nothing, unless you really, really like to kill bushes, apparently. I mean, it's a promising start if you're into the top-down action-adventure genre. Admittedly, the combat begins by being extremely repetitive. Which is one of the big problems that I had with those roguelites that used a similar combat system. It relied on having a very, very basic attack and then a bunch of modifiers that you could collect later on. But it always started off being really quite dull. Alright, we have a signpost taking us in the direction of a shrine, which is hopefully some sort of dungeon. Rabbit slaughter, how wonderful. Hold the space bar. I don't know what that is. But apparently it's popping up. Just offer the souls you've collected to the shrine. When enough souls have been added, it will tear a hole in reality. Okay. 
and then you get more power. So that's the level up system, essentially. So I have some souls. So I'm going to point it and hold it. There we go. Come on, mush mush. We don't have all day. We have a world to dominate. There we go. That's a really nice effect. I'm going to give him credit for that. Wow. And now everything looks terrible. Interesting. All right. We have a new spell. And if I select it there, that's really nicely animated. Even the music changed as well when we corrupted the world. That's a surprising level of detail. It's a bit unfortunate that the toggle weapon tutorial on the ground is using a controller prompt. I'm not really sure why that is. Yeah, now there's a whole bunch of new stuff. What's this? Ah, it's a shop. All right, then. At least I assume it's a shop. I just love the little eyes there. Okay, merchants, merchants, yes. All right, yes, we get it. Hmm. So I can buy Hellfire Tornado, but I need 600 souls for that. Gangrenous and rotten. This horrid smelling toe leaves a rotten trail wherever it goes. All right, sure. Let's buy one of those. Why not? Confirm. All right. Now, the hotbar thing down the bottom does actually work. You've got to press the right one, and then it'll activate as your secondary. So I can now do that and leave this nonsense everywhere. But that's a power-up. It's pretty temporary by the looks of it. So I think I've run through them, unless it has some sort of recharge. Not sure whether or not that's the case. I'm still dropping that stuff. I wonder how long it lasts for. Maybe it lasts until I deselect it. No, there it's gone. Okay. So you can buy different power-ups and abilities. This sword is really getting me hurt quite a lot. It's regenerating my magic, but I'm not really sure it's worth the health damage that I'm taking here. I've got to admit, I do like this idea that it starts off all idyllic and... Oh, that was an explosion. <laughs> Let's watch out for that. As I said, I do like the idea that it starts off all idyllic and then things get absolutely awful later on. This does seem like it's got a lot of promise, actually. Just maybe a bit of a surprise. Get bugger off! Thank you. Okay, so I assume that was a signpost of some sort. <laughs> Never mind. Get, get, it's a bloody rabbit! It's get, Look at the birds! <laughs> so I just lost half my health to a bunny. I guess you've got to give credit to any game that allows you to do that. If that's not a Monty Python reference, I don't know what is. Get out of it! Surely, maybe change my magic back. Much, much easier to beat this stuff that way. There's the power up. I, f I definitely feel like I'm backtracking here, but also it seems like the game is kind of designed around that because the terrain changes and new events appear as a result of you changing and transforming the world into this horrible mess. I assume these things are evil because I made the world evil. Get off! Is it. Do I have to. I, think, I assume you just have to shake it off there. I don't know if you've got to time your button presses at all. Doesn't make that clear. I need to be super careful with that. I still think it could do with a better map. I've got to be honest. You see a little bit of information here. Now, now at least I see where I am. Previously, I wasn't able to do that. So I suppose I want to be going north really out of this area now that I've corrupted it. Mini maps are always nice. I generally don't like having to go to a separate screen to see that sort of stuff. Let's see what this has to say. Go south. No, I don't believe you. I think... Okay, I probably should have gone south. <laughs> yes, this may have been a horrible mistake. I'm gonna die horribly, aren't I? Oh, God! Where on earth did these come from? I have to say, I'm really liking the aesthetic so far. There we go. It's really quite lovely. In combination with the fairly wide-ranging soundtrack, it really does seem like it was treated with tender loving care. Okay, so I need some sort of spell in order to bypass that. So a little bit of Zelda-esque stuff. Get the right item in order to do this. 
You keep pestering me, you know that. Although the dialogue d seems to be pretty good. If I had the time to read it. You can use Ruin's power to teleport, but without him you are nothing. Yes. A well. Poison said well. Is Please tell me he's not peeing in the well. I think he's peeing in the well. <laughs> this game has quite the sense of humor. Who are you? Can I horribly murder you? Should I horribly murder you? I should try and see what happens. Okay, game doesn't let you murder children. I think that that's reasonable. That that's a thing that it can probably get away with. This actually seems like a really nice little action adventure game. Surprising. From looking at the screenshots, it looked kind of like a top-down shooter for the most part. Oh dear. No, we've already skipped through this. Thank you very much. So it's got a bunch of side quests and dungeons and things like that. So it's a, a twisted little Zelda, probably the best way to describe it, at least on my first impressions. How do I horribly ruin this village? Evidently not by going through any of those. I actually wonder if I can bypass any of this. I may not have done everything in the previous area. Can I steal things from it? Yes, let, let me steal from your chest. Hmm. What will this do exactly? I actually have no idea what that is that I just put down there. Is it a mine of some sort? Thank you. I will take all your valuables. Thank you very much. What do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> Mangy beast. Wonderful. It's one of those weird situations where you're supposed to be pure evil and yet every now and again you have a little change of heart or whatever. Thank you. Implosion bombs. Because why not? Let us see what these do. The inability to blow up civilians and have them sucked into a dark void is extremely disappointing, I must admit. Oh god! <laughs> Blew myself up more so than anything else. Wow. All right, then. <laughs> oh, hello. What do you have to say for yourself? I want whatever that is, and he won't let me have it. So I suppose I have to figure out exactly how to do that. Let's have a look at the map again. So the next quest I assume is to defeat Lady Eamon. But it seems like the only way I can get there is to acquire some other spell or something. Which makes me wonder where the hell I'm supposed to go now. They do give you a lot of items very early on, I have to say. Not necessarily sure that's a good thing. I'm trying to figure out what to do with all these bloody things. Oh, hello. It seems like they might be an ally. That was it. All right, then. Let's just keep going north and see if we can find this thing. All right, another combat area by the looks of it. All right. Okay, I'm getting a feel for what this is. It's actually quite impressive. I definitely don't hate it. It's not, not a genre I'm generally... A huge fan of, but you've got to admire the amount of work that's been put into it. Decent enemy variety even this early on. I do like this idea that these mini bosses sort of have a bullet hell element to them. That's really interesting. I'm sure they don't drop anything, but hey. And it is really rather pretty. Let's see what's up here. Oh, bloody hell. All right, that may have been a mistake. Have one of these. There you go. I'm sure you'll enjoy that. This isn't doing any damage to it, is it? Mm, a little. 
I wonder if this game does have some form of fast travel. I have to assume that it does. What is this? Something I can't gain access to, evidently. The Knight's Gauntlet. So, a bunch of knights, in other words. All right. I suppose that's to be expected. I'm not really sure why you'd switch out of this weapon to that magical sword thing, because it seems like you can just avoid all damage like this, where it's a little bit trickier to do with the sword. I assume there is a good reason at some point. All right, well, that actually wraps up our 15 minutes of it, but would I be compelled to play more? Yeah, actually. I think quite a few people would, I mean, it's a pretty strong start. A little confusing, admittedly, trying to figure out exactly where I'm going, but then again, I'm legendarily bad at navigation. It seems like it has a great deal of substance to it, and hopefully a lot of content. Don't know how long it is exactly, but it's a strong start. If you're looking for something that is Zelda-esque, with a slightly different theme, as opposed to you being the hero, you are some sort of villainous creature come to ruin everything. I was particularly impressed by the transition between the nice, wonderful, pretty, verdant forest and the evil, creepy one after you'd unleashed your powers in the shrine. And the change in music was a nice little touch there as well. Oops. Okay, so gotta get something to bypass that. But yeah, this is really nice, and it's actually got a 40% off launch discount until September the 9th. So the game ends up being really cheap, actually. I think it's about $5. So this might be the sort of thing you want to look into if you're interested in these top-down action adventures. This one seems to be very, very nicely put together. It's got a lot going for it. So I find the combat elite, at least initially a little bit dull, but I imagine that's going to clear up the further you go into the game with more interesting enemies and a larger variety of magic spells and so on and so forth. So it's hard to complain too much about that. It's not like there's anything wrong with the combat. It's just, it's a little basic initially. But once you get a bunch of items and abilities and start to upgrade things, I have a feeling that's going to change rather rapidly. And there's so much to explore. It seems like a, a fairly large world. I mean, if you look at the size of it, there's really quite a lot going for it. Yeah, not too shabby. That is quite interesting. Only the... I think this is the first game in this series so far that really kept my interest and really made me want to play a little bit more of it. There you go, folks. It's called Rack and Ruin. It's currently available on Steam with a 40% off launch discount. So you may wish to check it out. My name's been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.